Welcome to this excerpt from my book, Our Mother Tongue, 108 Facts About Sanskrit. My name is Paramo. Fact 38. Yaska was the greatest etymologist of our mother tongue. Etymology is the study of the origin of words and their meanings. Nirukta is the word used in Sanskrit to refer to one of the ancillary sciences connected to the Vedas, which covers etymology and studies the interpretation of the words in the Vedas. The most well-known ancient scholar in this area whose works have come down to us is Yaska. His work is simply called the Nirukta. There were many etymologists before him and Yaska built his theories over the vast amount of work that existed before him. Gargya was one such ancient etymologist Yaska quotes but disagrees with. Yaska claims to be a successor of Shakatayana, an early etymologist who also he quotes. In comparison, the earliest Western etymologist was Plato and Yaska himself predates Plato by many centuries. The Nirukta of Yaska is a treatise on etymology and semantics explaining how words in the Vedas got their meanings. Many of the words he explains are from the Nigantu, a thesaurus of words appearing in the Vedas. Some say that Yaska himself is the author of the Nigantu. The period of Yaska is uncertain. He is thought to have lived in the early part of the first millennium BCE. Yaska applied a practical and scientific method to deriving the origin of words. He was a secular man and did not ascribe any ritualistic, mystic or supernatural elements to his analysis. Yaska's Nirukta is the earliest surviving etymological treatise in the world. The basic premise of Yaska's study was that all words in a language can be reduced to a basic set of elements called roots. No word in a language is underivable from a root. He enunciated three general principles for deriving words from roots. The first principle is this. Derive words from roots in the normal fashion, modifying the root to get regular grammatical forms. For example, pachaka from the root pach, cook, bheda from bid, break, bodha from but, no, etc. These words are formed by taking the root, modifying the root, gunating of repaying, and adding standard suffixes. But Yaska says that one need to be careful when applying this principle to get back to the root, as a word may have undergone various linguistic processes. Some of these processes are syncopy, loss of one or more sounds from the interior of a word. Example, jagmu, they went from the root gum, go. Metathesis, transposition of sounds and syllables in a word, especially contiguous ones. Example, tarku, spindle knife from the root krith, cut. Anaptixis, insertion of a vowel in a word. Example, bharuja, roast barley, from the root bhraj, fry or roast. Haplology, elimination of a syllable when two identical or similar syllables occur consecutively. Example, tricha, from three richa, or three plus richa, three verses. Assimilation, vowels or consonants changing to be more similar to nearby sounds. Example, mukdha, simple knife from root muh be crazed his second principle is if the first principle cannot be used use the meaning of the word and derive it from some similarity of form or similarity of letter or syllable thus you can derive ishti sacrifice from yaj sacrifice it is important to understand this principle carefully and not misuse it many a time words that come from the same source would have altered so much that there is not much in common among them. For example, the Sanskrit word hansa, Latin ansa, German guns, Greek hina, and the English goose have the same origin. It is important that this rule be applied only in reference to the context and the meaning of the word. His third principle is derive the word in accordance with its meaning. If the meanings of the words are the same, their etymology should be the same. And if the meanings are different, their etymologies will be different. For example, the word ishta we saw before, derived from the root ish means wished. Similarly, the word anudara, analyzed as anudara means miser, but analyzed as anudara means followed by wife. This is true of other languages also. For example, the English word sound can mean noise, test the depth, or strong. The first two derivations are from Latin, through French, son and sonder, whereas the third is some old English sund. In English, the word clip has two opposite meanings, to fasten together and to cut. 
the word derives from two different sources old english klippan clasp and old norse klippa cut yaska also discusses philology origin of languages and parts of speech yaska names four parts of speech noun being verb becoming preposition and particle he has a very detailed discussion on how names of objects are formed he implies that a particular name comes to be associated with a particular object even though other objects can also have the same name for example the word takshaka he who cuts wood means carpenter though others also can cut wood or the word bhumija born of earth is applied only to the planet mars though there are other things born of earth yaska was a person who was remarkably free of fanaticism and bigotry and followed a very rationalistic approach to his deductions and analysis in one of the chapters there is a frank discussion about the skepticism that obtained then about the authority of the vedas and which claimed that the vedic stanzas were meaningless yaska himself believed and establishes that the vedic hymns are revealed and therefore authoritative and handed down from generation to generation his work is to facilitate the careful study of the vedas there have been a few commentators of the nirukta the most important of who is durga or durga simha an ascetic who was descended from vasishta and who lived in a hermitage near jammu in the 13th century ce there is an interesting episode in his commentary yaska uses stanza rigveda 32353 to explain the meaning of the word lodham durga refuses to comment on this because quote the stanza in which this word occurs is hostile to vasishta and i am a descendant of vasishta of the kapishthala branch and hence i do not explain this stanza unquote it is interesting to note that the vedas too sometimes showed the base instincts of people in fact yaska says that some of the vedic stanzas are imprecatory 